Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're talking about the short story, The Defense of Free Mind by Desirina Boscovich um, from the anthology Resist, Tales from a Future Worth Fighting Against. Um, and let's go ahead and hop into our passage. Every society needs its myths, I guess. Your people, our people, they decided to be free thinkers, and that meant they were free to invent their own facts. They fled the city as it died, took everything they could, built their own world and a reality to match. My whole life I've been taught the city wanted to oppress us. Some people find it oppressive to be asked for help. So what is this story about? Well, the defense of free mind Des Desirina Boscovich is about one girl's break from the society she grew up in, and we're seeing that a little bit in that passage we just looked at. Uh, Renee the uh, person who's breaking free from the society, is a 16-year-old girl growing up on a floating city named Freemind. After becoming a young adult, she, like all Freemind citizens, is signed up as a defender of Freemind. This means that in between her work and schooling, uh, she has to respond to various attacks from the city, and this is city with a capital C. People from the city appear as mindless hordes with shaved heads and clad in gray jumpsuits. Um, Renee is told that they're taking ships to conquer Freemind and force mind control drugs on its citizens. However, Renee is captured and taken away from Freemind during one of these attacks and learns the truth. It turns out that the citizens of Freemind are implanted with augmented reality devices to alter their perception of the city and the people coming from the city. It turns out that the boats seemingly attacking Freemind are actually refugee ships and that the city, that the city with a capital C again, is not a totalitarian government, but rather small communities trying to stay alive in the post-apocalyptic wreckage. Rene was captured initially as a hostage to try to bargain for medicine. However, this plan fails as Freemind simply fakes her death and leaves her to the city. Rene begins to sympathize with the downtrodden, but still wishes to return to Freemind, and determined to get the medicine they were seeking, Rene and another me former member of Freemind, Lucas, among others, uh, use an EMP to try to break the augmented reality field, Renee storms on to Freemind, rushes to her mother, believing that her mother will help supply the poor with medicine now that she knows the truth. Unfortunately, her mother reveals that she, like most of the adults, were already aware of the truth and are apathetic to the plight of people from the city and others. Uh, Renee frees, flees, sorry, Renee flees from Freemind with as much medicine as she can carry, um, and the story ends with her um, in the city trying to help out, right? And there's another passage from the story. Um, I'm not going to flip back to it, um, but another passage from the story that ties into our opening passage. Um, and it is, they want to make us feel responsible for them. This is the mother talking. And make us feel guilty for not giving up what we have. Just because our parents had the foresight to leave before things got bad, they want to force us to feel sorry for them. And if we don't, they attack us for not thinking what they want us to think. So... Um, to get into my uh, specific notes for this story, um, the first thing I want to remark on is that it's very much a political allegory, the cave or the matrix type story, right? Um, I think there's even an episode of Black Mirror that is like this where soldiers are shooting zombie type things and they realize that uh, they've been implanted with stuff to see them that way. Um, it's a common trope. Um, but it's very much, again, as I said, you can trace it back to the allegory of the cave, right? Someone um, rising up out of the cave, seeing the real world, and then trying to go back to convince people um, who are kind of still under some type of illusion or lie um, of what the real world is. Now, that's taking that and, again, applying it to politics, where people who are kind of in this delusion are... Um, being freed, or its enemies turning to allies as the trope were, right? Rene then joins the people of the city and kind of sympathizes with them and understands that she was on the wrong side of history and that she's um, killed and harmed people who were just seeking help, right? Um, which also ties into kind of one of the things the story doesn't really touch on as much, but I think it's an interesting thing to think about, um, especially in regard to the story, is the redemption of evil actions, right? If people from the city... Um, not city, if people from Freemind are attacking these people um, and they learn the truth and they choose to change, can they be redeemed for what they've done in the past? If so, what does it take to be redeemed, right? And I also thought it was really interesting to pull out a tweet um, from the author of this story um, that kind of relates to that idea of uh, th this idea of people 
um, awakening to some new truth or awakening to the truth, whether you agree with what um, truth she says at the bottom there. Uh, quote, maybe it's just quarantine talking, and this is from February 18th, uh, 2021, but the reality dawning on me that American life is fundamentally hollow cesspool of spectacle and misery is really bumming me out lady, uh, lately, right? We have uh, someone, quote unquote, um, reality dawning on them, right? And it's a reality that is, um, they, they are seeing as a hollow cesspool and misery um, and all this. And which again, it's the question is, what do you do if someone is um, finding out that something is bad, right? Like a classic example is like, um, you know, maybe you're a younger person and you're finding out for the first time that like a lot of the shoes or a lot of the products are made with child labor in other countries, right? Or made under horrible conditions. And those are the products that you use every day. Are you then responsible for the products in the past? You know, it's, it's, this kind of realization of it is something that's more common, I think, than a lot of people realize, which ties us into our kind of big question for the story. And no matter what um, your personal politics are, I think you can understand that there are uncomfortable truths that people learn as they go along, right? Again, as I said, even if it's something like the shoes you have are made with exploited labor in other countries. Um, but let's hop into the big question already. I've rambled enough in the notes. Uh, one of the big questions of the story is how do we then respond to learning uncomfortable truths and how should we respond when others are learning uncomfortable truths that we are already aware of? Do we support? If so, how do we support them? Um, are they, should they still be condemned for not acting further? It just again, how do we respond when we learn uncomfortable truths and how do we respond to others when they're learning uncomfortable truths that we're already aware of that perhaps in the past that they've purposely ignored like the citizens of free mind for example as always cite the text and any other sources to support your answer um thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video